Hello, everyone. This is Vince Versace, National Managing Editor of the Daily Commercial News and Journal of Commerce, joining you today for the 100th episode of the Construction Record. With me is staff writer Russell Hickson with the Journal of Commerce. And digital media editor Warren Fry, also with the Journal of Commerce. So we have our West Coast team representing us uh, <laughs> here <laughs> in our 100th podcast. Uh, the DCN team just uh, wasn't available, so you're stuck with me from the East, folks, as we talk about how we got here over the last three <laughs> years to 100 episodes. Guys, we've been celebrating it via social media over the last yeah. week and a bit for... The Centurion. Yes. <laughs> it feels like three years. It feels like, like, I don't know, a week or two ago we started this thing. Yeah. Oh, it's true. Well, it would be, uh, what was it? It was, yeah, it was three years, uh, March 2017 is mm-hmm. when we launched uh, uh, at CCA, right? That's that was, true, uh, yes. that, that's when we uh, promoted, uh, when we first kind of went live. Right. And so for the, for our listeners, like today, the 100th, we're not really, obviously we're going to talk about news in the sense of some of the topics we covered, but really just hope you join us on this kind of retrospective journey just a little bit because we feel like it's an accomplishment and i was saying it to the guys offline before and our other staff and leadership and you all would remember remember when blogs became the big thing mm-hmm. everybody had a blog everybody was blogging yeah. and then all of a sudden blogs start to die you know, and fall to the wayside mm-hmm. and i find that with podcasts it's the same thing during our tenure of growth up until today there weren't too many Canadian construction podcasts, that's for sure. No, no, there weren't. You know, I'd like to think we, when we, and people are telling us that we've kind of been the trailblazer to a degree because of our consistency and quality. Mm-hmm. But uh, now we've seen all kinds of podcasts popping up, especially during the pandemic. Well, there's people are at home with nothing to do. So, <laughs> so yeah, might no, as well podcast. Sure. And like the technology has just made it like for almost no money you could just set up a podcast and record like good enough audio. You, you Anybody could do it. Mm-hmm. But strangely enough, celebrities are what drive like a couple, like maybe a year ago, Conan O'Brien decided to do a podcast or several of them. So people were like, wow, what are podcasts? I'm like, well, they've been mm-hmm. around for over 10 years. Okay. It's because Conan's doing it, which I'm sure is good, but come on. Well, no. Yeah. And um, it's interesting talking to a couple of folks as we line up our guests for 2021, we're looking to do cross pods monthly right. cross pods and um, three of the uh, podcasts that I've been talking to over the last month, they said they saw such a huge uptick in their podcast downloads and follows since March, since the pandemic started. Really? And as we were discussing, you know, this potential cross pod, it's like, well, why do you think? <laughs> and um, I think we both all kind of came to an agreement. It's people wanted to latch on to something, especially like even if they're construction podcasts, if they weren't working or not in the field, because at the beginning, a lot of things are getting shut down. People mm-hmm. still wanted to hear the conversation and the latest. Well, I think a lot of those networking events, a lot of those, a lot of the places where people normally have these conversations, where they're normally doing that, it, it's radically changed, right? And so I think podcast is one of those ways that people can feel connected with like the the issues and what's going on and, and listen to some of that thought leadership that they, they normally might get at uh, some of these conferences. Although some of these conferences and things are, are definitely catching up and they've rapidly uh, uh, adapted too mm-hmm. Warren, like i mean you're familiar with the podcast world outside of our the construction yeah. record world and i always remember when we started to do the groundwork for this and i talked to you it's like and i was a totally a newbie to this mm-hmm. and i asked you like what should i keep in mind as we start to do this and you said patience yeah. i remember patience and it t- is. yeah like patience and building a body of work i remember you used that word that phrase so I ask you both now, what do you guys think of our body of work? I think, 100 uh, episodes in. I think we've done okay. I think uh, your cross pods haven't hurt for, for one thing. But I was also looking back. I can't find the name of the guy who I interviewed. Uh, but we when we would go to conferences, it was a perfect uh, testing ground for this stuff. We just interview people and we use it for stories and we use it for podcasts as well. And so some of my favorite interviews came from that, you know, and just and just talking to people on the ground and putting mm-hmm. it in the podcast. And then them tuning in to hear themselves and, and to, spread, to spread the word, mostly with association stuff. Well, I think it started out off as being like, 
what I saw it was was just like kind of a repurposing of all the content we already had in the paper. It's like, oh, what do we got in the paper? What can we talk about? Oh, maybe we interviewed somebody. Maybe we can also use that for this. And now it's turned into a kind of there's content that we produce exclusively for the podcast. That is, it, it's its, it. its own yeah. product rather than just like a way to repurpose other stories and things where it's like I get excited. I'm like, oh, man, there's this project I'm doing. And it's like specifically tailored for the podcast. Mm -hmm. Oh, your hero work episode, your recent hero work episode. That was great. Yeah, it was the opposite in that case where it's like every, you know, any other piece of content that I got from it was like after the fact, because the main thing of it was, you know, producing it for the podcast. Mm -hmm. No, I like it. I remember when we had those initial discussions, it was about giving a voice to the written word that was Mm -hmm. being, you know, that we were driving. We had Mm -hmm. fallen under the national umbrella. We had the DCN and JOC now united on a strategic plan forward. And we just felt like it was a natural uh, thing to experiment with. But we didn't jump in right away. Like we did our due diligence. We made sure mm-hmm. we set ourselves up with the podcast. But I look at those early, ep- listen to those early episodes as I have mm-hmm. being nostalgic over the last couple of weeks. And I realized, man, my audio really sucked at the beginning <laughs> of all this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it was just awful. Uh, Moving probably, home is what helped. Yeah. 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 Totally. But, um, a, it was it was great to have. That's what that was the initial feedback. I think that's what I'm getting at from listeners, from our editorial advisory board members. They liked the fact they got to hear Warren, Russ, Lindsay, Don, Angela, or myself talk about the stories that we were writing. You know what I mean? Get a bit more of the story behind the story. One of the things about conveying that, right? One of the things about podcasts that people like is that they're authentic uh, and that you can put a name to the face but more than that it's not like you hear somebody on the radio or you see somebody on tv doing the news it's just different there's a remove to it and that's just been for whatever reason economic aesthetics Mm -hmm. and then podcast kind of shatters that so you see the people writing these stories that you've read for years presumably uh, and then you just get to know them as a person which you do to an extent with radio as well uh, Mm because radio is an intimate medium but this is even more so that because it's yeah the sound's good but it's still more authentic and more I don't know, amateur is not the right word, but uh, mm-hmm. grounded, I guess. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I think I get to talk about stories in a way that, like, when, when you write an article, there's, like, a very specific kind of set of parameters that you want to follow because you know that piece is going to be online for a long time. People may refer to it as a reference document, and you have to make sure people know who said what, what they're referring to, that it's very clear but you know when you can just have kind of a conversation about stories and chat about it you you can get into a lot of things that maybe you don't have enough space for in the paper and i think i've really enjoyed that yeah yeah i still remember the first couple phone calls i got from the stakeholders i always use the word stakeholders people Mm -hmm. of the industry that we deal with right whether they're sources and when we were i was around episode seven it was really before we hit even number 10. I remember getting two different phone calls from two different airports in Canada, from stakeholders (laughs) of the industry, people that we're familiar with, going, I'm sitting here in the lounge. One was an email. I'm sitting here in the lounge listening to your voice and Warren's voice, Mm -hmm. and I like it. (laughs) And I was like, well, that's that's cool. And I'm like, well, you know, what is it? And and trying to explore that, how that connection, that person went out of their way to send an email. And another one was a phone call. It's like, hey, I'm waiting for my flight. Just letting you know that podcast was awesome. Wow. And I was like, Wow, you went out of your way for that. So, what is it about this medium, this intimate way that we're connecting with people? Our old, our readers are now becoming listeners at the beginning. Well, I felt like that was our audience at the first, right? Another thing I was thinking about is like, and you guys probably agree, being old, old head print reporters, is that you've always got that one nut uh, quote that you get from somebody, and you're like, oh yeah, that's the hit, that's the hit, the endorphin hit you get after writing a story. And sure. it's like, oh yeah, this is this frames the whole thing, and you can actually express that that excitement in a podcast in a way you can't you just can't do when you're writing it so yeah. that comes out too i think yeah Russ, yeah. You were yeah well i think like um you can contextualize things a bit more like mm-hmm. you can ex- like i can really in in a way that i can't write it i can really say hey this is a big deal i've been covering this for six years and i haven't seen a, uh, something like this happen ever that's crazy and like you can get that across in a podcast in ways you can't put exclamation marks in your story no everybody you know. gets to be the ad issue panel yes sure. yeah yes yes 
which I love actually. For the yeah, record, so I. I like that. And I download that podcast too, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> to get everything because uh, Chantelle Bear is like a, a hero to me, pretty much. Well, I'm a total nerd. I said hi to her at the budget. <laughs> yes, I remember. Oh. I remember you saying that to her. <laughs> well, I remember her and Coin. I remember the first time I saw him at the, the budget lockup in Ottawa. I'm like, here I am, like this adult, yeah. almost like kind of doing this hero worship thing, right? It's like, uh, it's, and it's very that. niche too. It's just like my in my Doctor Who world where you see some guy who directed <laughs> some episode in 1985, and you're like. <gasps> It's him. At, nobody has a clue who that is. Yeah, and, and for the for the listener, if you don't know, Warren is a very prominent Doctor Who podcaster. Yeah, la di da, which is why you're mentioning that. The Venn diagram Fantastic. between these two things is there, it exists. I know a couple <laughs> of listeners. I, I also but, think but it's not. It's not another that point I think is, is, that's important is like sometimes I'll I'll interview people over the phone for a story, and we'll just have such a great conversation where so much is brought up, and they express so many things, and I can only fit so many things in my article mm-hmm. that like getting to publish. You know, just that conversation often very much uncut. I think there's so much more information that you can get from it in terms of like just how much somebody maybe cares about something, uh, just how eloquent they are or just the way they speak. You you can't really always get that in in print. Mm -hmm. I and it's kind of weird. I'm thinking back, right? I think about the evolution. It's a three year arc. And I know I drive you guys crazy in my stuff. I'm always talking about arcs and strategies. The arc. The arcs and growth, some pipelines, and our poor listeners have probably heard me use some of this term. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But uh, never once did I think when we were mapping out the growth of this, it's like, okay, we have to be at this point after year one or after year two. We X amount of downloads or this or that. What I've been so proud of, and even today, I was saying it's like, I really feel like, even though we're tied to like the titans and the Bibles of covering construction in Canada, to the Daily Commercial News and Journal of Commerce. Mm-hmm. And I challenge anybody who wants to say otherwise, bring it on, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? You as heard, far as construction. Heard the man. Yeah, they're you fighting words. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and um, never once, because I knew we were bolstered by solid content. And as long as we were telling the stories of the industry, I kind of felt like we were always going to be successful. There was never like this, we need this legitimizing point. But I'll tell you, it was kind of nice when we started getting nominated for stuff. Or when we start to get the first request to be on the podcast. Yeah. Not for an interview for a story, not for a video, but to be on the podcast. Specifically that, yeah. Yeah, and I thought, okay, I think we finally hit something oh, here. Those have, I've, those have started trickling in, like, maybe in the last, like, year and a half. All of a sudden, I'm getting stuff in my inbox. People going, hey, like, not, oh, here's a press release. Oh, here's the thing that we're doing you might want to highlight. It's specifically man, we would really love to be on the construction record. And I'm like, that that says a lot, I think, for our sources too. Because their their people are looking like, how can we get like the most bang for like our effort? Like we want to be involved in the conversation. The fact that like when they're having those conversations, the construction record is coming up as, hey, if we want to be thought leaders, if we want to be involved in the construction conversation, we need to be on that podcast. That I think is so huge, uh, a huge statement on like how far it's come. Mm. I mean, and we kind of sit there. It's like, I think it was by the year, because now we're three years running Feedspot. Mm-hmm. has uh, ranked us in the top five of North American construction podcasts. Right. And in that top five, we're always the only, we're the only Canadian one in the top 20. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and that's based not because of any ads we buy with Feedspot or anything. They, it is a criteria. They have a judging panel. They look at our Google ranking, the quality, the consistency. Like they take in a lot of things for that ranking and didn't even know it existed. As a ranking, mm-hmm. right? We were just doing our thing through yeah. your guidance, Warren, through us just feeling it out and responding. Like we start to get these s- small little accolades that mean a lot because you're yeah. we're pouring effort into something that was never never existed before in our stable for sure. Uh, you know, communication, right? So I don't know. It, it, it's been pretty cool that way, and like uh, we were supposed to be the supporting podcast for con expo we were you know one of the the partner podcasts for that i thought that kind of was a little feather in our cap too coming yeah. off of construction junkies ranking of best podcasts which we were nominated for and finished second and uh, right yeah, and it it's been so cool. if it hadn't been for a global pandemic so I mean. yeah well, that if, was yeah we had a really was, big exciting plan like we were so excited for all that and then everything kind of changed mm-hmm. and it's i think nobody's uh, fault except the exactly 
mm-hmm. but there was an organic growth. So like when I was mentioning, like talking to those other podcasts around potential cross pods, they're like, some of them have said they've seen an uptick since the pandemic. Sure. We've seen a steady increase, but our increase started October of last year mm-hmm. as we were doing the lead up to Con Expo. That started right. to expose us to a lot more things. And and then when we got another feed spot recognition, we had the construction junkie uh, polling that we were in as well. Like it felt like there was just this organic momentum that was building last year and it's carried us through and the pandemic as well. Like, but it's changed in a way too during the pandemic. We've changed our storytelling, hmm. you know, uh, to a degree. Well, at least we started to experiment with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I don't know how you feel about that because Warren, you're the guy that does a lot of the post production work. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, I even I recently dipped my toe into doing a bit of the post production work that I probably would have never done. Like I had I learned how to cut and record audio and mix and do all sorts of levels and things. And I don't know, the pandemic, I think, really pushed me to, to do that. And like, I don't know, I've been a print journalist my whole life. And to try and tell a story in audio and cut things together was a big stretch for me and it was really challenging, but I think I really enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, that's the podcast really pushed me to do something like that. I came at it from, at it from the other direction. Like I've done a bunch of print too, but I also mm-hmm. started in TV. And so I got to use a lot of stuff I'd never, I hadn't used for a long time. Um, right. At least, or at least not in a professional capacity. <laughs> so, uh, right. so yeah, it was kind of cool to, to be able to do that with work. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was that it was like, I was, if it wasn't going to be print, it was going to be radio back in the day when I was trying to decide what to do. And, uh, you know, went to print because that was my strength. But I've kind of had a joy of almost feeling like this is radio, mm-hmm. you know, when we do it. And well, uh, it's superseded radio, I'd say. When's the last yeah. time? I mean, I'm a CBC guy and I have been since I was a little kid, but so I have listened to CBC, but I mean, it's mostly podcasts now, let's be honest, even if they're CBC mm-hmm. podcasts. Yeah. You know, and, uh, it, <laughs> During the pandemic, we are the, I don't know, I think it would have happened without it. We were starting to get those requests. Yeah. Like, I want to be on the podcast. But really, really started to change was that exposure at the back end of last year was the international requests to be on mm. our podcast. Right. You know, that, like, outside of our domestic market of Canada and the U.S., mm-hmm. uh, Construct Connect, we're in both markets. The fact that we started getting requests from uh, abroad. And also from some prominent people in the U.S. that wanted to be on the construction record. They're not asking to be interviewed for the Daily Commercial News or the Journal of Commerce. They discover us because they've listened to us or their PR guys have listened to us or they've seen our ranking. Mm. That felt like uh, it, it's, it's been great to boast about internally mm-hmm. with, our, with our executive and our leadership. It's like, look, this product that we started really at a grassroots level has taken off. Mm-hmm. You know, and we're interviewing Luis Vidal, like uh, uh, the renowned airport architect from Spain. And we had fun kind of creating that episode, making it sound mm-hmm. like we were talking That's in right, a yeah. cafe. Which we've since done later with yeah. other uh, interviews as well. Yeah, you know, I think, I don't know, did, what do we say internally? We're calling it the Vidal effect. Yeah. Are we, are we <laughs> going to apply the Vidal effect to some episodes going forward, right? Because uh, somebody said it's like, it, sound, it's like so, it sounds like you're listening to what, this, uh, this American life, but it's this construction yeah. life, you know? Yeah. So, and, uh, I don't know if that's our format going forward. It'd be great to hear from our listeners what they think of a bit of the format change. But, Russ, you were talking about it. I still think there's a value to our, our format that got us here. Sure. You know, talking about the news stories, talking about the story behind the story and having the multitude of voices in a podcast. And I think yeah. once uh, once we can actually travel places again and so forth, mm-hmm. that'll be something that happens more. It's just it's the nature of the beast right now and for the foreseeable near future, given the vaccine is being put in people mm-hmm. this week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's been the amazing thing. We've. For what it's worth, yes, uh, I was saying we had a building momentum and we had popular podcast episodes before the pandemic, Mm. but four out of our top 10 most popular podcasts have happened since March. Mm. And that's because we were reporting, you guys were reporting critical stuff as far as construction in COVID out west and us out here out east. And it was a way for people to hear a bit more of uh, the context behind some of these decisions. The scary part was at the beginning, things were changing so quick. Mm -hmm. It was hard to keep up. With everything that's happening. really hard to keep up. You know, so we could leverage the website, but the podcast at the same time is like, well, what do, what we would want to talk about would change within three days, mm-hmm. right? I, I also think a cool thing now is like going forward, um, you're going to have a bunch of people who are super familiar 
with this kind of equipment. Whereas before, I think it might have been a challenge for some people to how do I record? How do I get on a Zoom meeting or a whatever meeting? And and now I feel like an entire like group of people, especially in our industry, is like, yeah, I know how to do that. I've had to do it for a year. Like I, I know how to use people, all the equipment. And people are available age, to talk yeah. too right now. An age of people that generally wouldn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> they just yeah. wouldn't bother. And like, well, I'll get my assistant to figure that out. Now they're all at home anyway. So yeah. I never have to explain it to people now. They're just like, of course I know how to use all this equipment. I do it all day at work. <laughs> That's an excellent point. Yeah, it's, it is true. Because it would have been tough because I remember when we would entertain, how are we going to incorporate video into yeah. our podcasts at the beginning? And we were like, well, the other person on the other end needs to be able to do it, right? Which was a basic so, proposition um, at first, and now it isn't. Yeah, yeah, I had no idea sometimes. I was like, I have to interview somebody. How do I record this call with them? How am I going to explain it? Well, it's like it was a huge logistical. Now everyone's like, of course I have teams. I, of course I have all this stuff. It makes it so, so much. The, the, the barrier to entry is a lot lower now, I think. Mm -hmm. Where do you guys want to go with the podcast? I guess maybe that's what we can tell the listeners. What, what, do you, what do you think about the future, like the next year ahead? What would you kind of want to bring to our subscribers and listeners? I definitely think more of the, more of the cross pods, but I'm also looking forward to eventually when we can get on a plane, getting a whole bunch of content from various events, when and if that happens. Because right. it, it was a great source of content, and it's something that you know I think is a value. It just isn't in the equation right now. Mm -hmm. How about you, Russ? I think I think for me, like the natural thing that I really want to do is use audio in more creative ways and, and use that to tell stories and, and it'll, it'll be easier once we can get out more but it's like rather than seeing a podcast and audio as a restriction it just opens up so many other things that i can do you know i can go to a job site you know hopefully in the future and record audio of, of work happening and interview someone you can get, get a sense and like a sensory experience of of, of what's happening and, uh, you know, we can go to events and, and, and record stuff like that. And, you know, if we talk about something, we can cut in audio of what it sounds like or, or, or someone on TV saying something. So I think it like it opens up a bunch of fun storytelling things that um, I'm really excited about and I, I want to push myself to explore. Yeah. I know for me, like part of the the accomplishment and the pride that comes with the construction record is that we created it during a time when we were transitioning our two print products away from print. The Journal of Commerce and the Daily Commercial News was all part of our digital roadmap, preparing ourselves for the future, right? And the construction record's been here to kind of help with those transitions in a way and almost kind of almost like a validation for some of that change too. Like we recognize the way our news is being consumed is changing. You know, and the podcast is part of that. And now it's becoming its own strong entity. At mm -hmm. some point, who knows? It may have to be its own team. Like we're a subset of a news yeah. team. The That's three fair. voices we have here compared combined and also the other folks that help support us too. Don and Angela and Lindsay, right? Like right. um imagine getting to that point where you actually have a sub like an actual pod team, you know, uh, what what would happen there? And that's why I'm excited about the experimentation and the things that you guys just talked about. The stuff, experimentation around cross pods, the storytelling. I like it. I like trying to experiment with the way we can tell stories differently, you know, and maybe like we've tightened up our episodes. Like this one's kind of probably going to be a little longer than usual, you know, right. as of recently. But I remember at the beginning how long our episodes were to what, what they are now, oh, right? Man. You know, they're not these epic productions, you know what I mean? It, yeah. You know, we can get in and out. For sure. You know, so and I always felt for you, Warren, because you had to edit a lot of audio. At that that's, point. that's my gig, man. That's not <laughs> I've tried you to know? start doing a little bit of that work for Warren now so he doesn't get a behemoth file. Yeah, right. But uh, well, that's what excites me for the future is that the cross pods excite me too. Just because when I talk to some of these other guys, they're in the same space as us doing niche things. Yeah. And we seem to have come to not even it's not even an agreement. We just realize they realize the construction worker does things they could never do. But also when I talk to them, I realize they're doing things, even though they're reporting on construct well, doing podcasts about construction, their area the, that area of specialty or focus is not one we would ever be able to dedicate to yeah, properly. I mean, if you're you know? talking to an architect, they're gonna have a 
incredible understanding of the aesthetics of the thing. Or if we're talking to a bunch of guys who are, you know, using the tools, that's also not us. So it's good to get, and we do get both sides of that. During this conversation, we've talked a lot about stakeholders and supporters and listeners and readers that have become listeners. And uh, we have a special short interview that we're going to share with you all. And uh, it's with uh, Giovanni Cotillo, uh, president of OGCA, the Ontario General Contractors Association. Uh, the reason why we have Geo, as we all know him, uh, on this, the 100th episode, is because Gio was the first supporter of this podcast, mm -hmm. of the idea of us launching a podcast. He was the first one at his former post with OSWCA uh, to put some money and sponsorship behind our podcast as well. And so I thought it might be interesting for our listeners now as we celebrate 100th episode, our 100th episode to hear why Gio stepped up and supported the construction record. So here's Giovanni Cotillo. Hello everyone, this is Vince Versace, National Managing Editor of the Daily Commercial News and Journal of Commerce, joining you today with a special uh, podcast chat with Giovanni Catillo, President of the Ontario General Contractors Association. Gio, say hello to the listeners. Hello <laughs> listeners, how is everyone? <laughs> now the reason why we have Gio with us here on our 100th episode is because uh, at its former uh, stop with the Ontario Sewer and Water Main Contractors Association, I got that right, Giovanni, you were the first person from the industry to step up and support this podcast. First person to kind of help push it out, be an ambassador for us. Uh, first person to sign up a sponsorship with our podcast. So our longtime listeners are familiar with your former association. And um, I just wanted to round circle back and talk to you as we approach the, as we hit our hundredth. Why? Why did you step up and uh, support us at the construction record? Uh, well, right off the hop, I see such a potential in podcasts. Um, podcasts are something that you know anyone can do, uh, and they don't have to be listened to live, right? So you can listen to them at, at your leisure, and it allows people flexibility, and and that's uh, meaningful in the industry. Especially because well, when we used to commute into work, you could pop in one of these podcasts and listen to it at your leisure as you drove in and really gain a sense and, and prepare yourself for the day. And that's what I used to do. And I found it so helpful um, in, in, in attacking or in dealing with issues as, as they came to us. Um, because the, let's be honest, the DCN and the Journal of Commerce, your topic your topics are, are, are industry-based, you're construction-based, you're focused on the betterment of the industry. And, and they're, they're not only topical, but, but kind of like you have the finger on the pulse of what the industry requires. And for that, I thought it was um, a good marriage. Um, I'm proud that you know, I, was, I was the first one because I've seen potential in the DCN and under your leadership, the direction that you were taking. And I, I thought it was phenomenal from the start. So I was, I was, I was humbled and, and privileged to be the first. Oh, thank you for that, Gio. And just for a note for the listeners, all kudos and backslapping that happens in this conversation <laughs> is genuine and there were no dollars attached. So, <laughs> and, you know, but I really appreciate that. Um, the one thing I've appreciated with Gio's partnership with the podcast for our listeners to know is he was one of the first people to really challenge us to and give us honest feedback and tell us how to improve or what we should do. And um, it's that type of valuable feedback that helps a product grow, helps a, a team grow. And um, we've kind of been aligned with that vision. You know what I mean? Tell the stories of construction in a different way, in a modern way, using the podcast. So Giovanni, is there anything in particular with the podcasts that we have done or how we do them that stands out for you as you've listened to us over the last three years? I think definitively your podcasts have evolved. Um, I'm not one to really, I don't necessarily want a, a PC version. I want to be challenged. I, I want to think about, you know, outside the box, um, things that, you know, maybe touch upon the comfort zone. That's how you grow, right? And, and now I can't tell you definitively, is there one podcast that really stands out in my mind? Because you've had 
bits and pieces that you could extrapolate from every podcast. I, I like the fact that you go national. You talk to Warren um, out in BC and he comes in and, and, and he says, well, this is happening in BC and you correlate it to what's happening in Ontario. And we see that there's, there's a connectivity amongst construction nationally. And, and that makes you think because, you know, uh, I sit on the CCA as well, Canadian Construction Association, for those of you that don't know, and we're, the local construction associations are constantly talking about commonality and how we can fix things. And I think the DCN does a very good job in kind of threading that or linking that together. And so, you know, the reason I'm, I'm always challenging you is dig deeper, get to the heart of the matter and, and don't be PC about it. And I know that the DCN hasn't been afraid to tackle the, the hard issues, the ones that really make people slightly uncomfortable because ultimately that leads to growth. Well, and exactly it. And as a news organization in the end, you know, we may be a B2B publication, but through this podcast and through our pubs, you've known it, you've seen it over the years we've been associated together, right? We want to cover the industry and give it the best intel possible, the best feedback possible. And that means sometimes having uncomfortable conversations on certain topics. And I appreciate that. And I know my team appreciates your candor and support. So, um, well, I, I, I tend to push your team a lot as well. And, and, <laughs> but, but I find that the DCN and yourself under your tutelage, you're, you're rather agnostic about relationships. You do have the relationships, but when it comes down to reporting the news, you don't play favorites. And that's mm -hmm. what I, re I really appreciate. It's, it's let's report on the story. Right. And, and this conversation that you and I are having, you know what? You know, under different circumstances, you could be challenging me on it as opposed to welcoming me on it. And I'm okay with that. And I think right. the industry has to as well. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And uh, at times, as we know, you and I both have read the studies before, like the industry when it comes to technology and innovation can quote unquote be a laggard depending on what study you read uh, or see. And we know with this podcast, we are innovating a different, different kind of module and medium for it to have a conversation. And we've seen over the last three years, this is probably one of the bigger compliments you've given it and others have as well. And I know we're blowing, you know what I mean? Kind of tooting our own horn. Sure. There's a lot more construction, Canadian construction podcasts now than there were when we launched because there wasn't one that was as consistent, as broad as us. And I, I circle back, it helped having support like yours and some of the early folks, you know what I mean? That just kind of pushed our, pushed us to be better. But but, but if I may, it wasn't just yeah. the support aspect of things. Obviously, from an industry standpoint, I saw potential. But if it wasn't for the content, if you guys were flat mm -hmm. um, in what you delivered, then we wouldn't ha be having this conversation on your 100th episode. Mm -hmm. it, it was because you continually pushed the envelope. It, because you were asking the difficult questions that, again, stimulated thought. It was something that, you know... It, it, it wasn't the same old, same old. And, and for that, I appreciated it. And that's why I thought, you know, what, when it came down to the onset about being one of the first to, to advertise or, or to sponsor, it made sense because I knew you and your team. And, I, and, I, and because of that, I thought, you know, this is an investment I'm, I'm willing to make. And with that, well, I thank you so much. I uh, hope our, our, reader, our listeners and our readers kind of got something out of that uh, as far as why you stepped up to support us. And um, here's to a couple hundred more episodes, hopefully. So <laughs> for sure. Thank you, Giovanni. It's, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. And, and uh, if I could, just as a, as a final thing to all the listeners mm -hmm. out there and to yourself and your family, have a, a happy and safe holiday season and all the best to everybody. Let's hopefully come out to 2021 um, swimmingly, as they say, and, and, and in a very positive light. Perfect. Thank you so much, Gio. My pleasure. Take care. Take care. So there you have it. That was Gio. Uh, Giovanni Catillo from OGCA, our first uh, ambassador of the construction record, let's call him, and biggest supporter. And like I said in that conversation with him that you just heard, what I liked about it is Geo challenged us. And it never was something like if he saw Warren at a conference and they were together, the podcast would come up and he would give suggestions. Same thing with me or anybody else on the team. So um, I thank him again for that. Fellas, I think we're close to wrapping it up. Any closing thoughts from you all? I want another hundred and then some. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. It just makes me excited because you get kind of, you know, when you do something for a long time, you kind of get into your patterns and uh, it's nice to have something kind of 
you know, break me out of my pattern and make me excited to do things I've never done before. And that's what the podcast has done. And and I hope, uh, I hope I'm a big part of it going forward. For sure. And with that, for our listeners, we just, um, if you've been following our social media campaign over the last two weeks, we've been giving you highlights from certain episodes that we thought kind of delivered little nuggets of wisdom or interest. Um, Edward Bailey, credit to him, our uh, editorial lead designer, came up with some really great graphics for that. Amazing graphics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, Warren, you then went ahead and pieced together a little montage of some of yeah, those key. Yeah, a little, little uh, montage of all the different quotes that you came up with, so it's not just all on me. Oh, no. No, exactly. It's that, but it's, it's ones kind of collectively we thought uh, would be kind of tell the story of the stories the construction record wants to bring to you all, our mm-hmm. listeners. So you'll be hearing from Luis Vidal, a renowned Spanish architect that focuses on primarily on airport uh, architecture design, but he does other projects as well. There's Sean Penn from Shandos. Russell, you talked to, uh, to Sean. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we got Stuart Carroll from Beck Technology. Uh, we have Mallory Brody from Bridget. And I think you put in something from this guy named Vince Versace. I think. <laughs> I've heard of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you may have heard of him. And, hard to uh, so book. Hard to book. It's tough to get a hold of that guy, I tell you. But uh, all the same, my thanks to you both. Because when I think back, the three of us have really been involved quite a bit since the pandemic started because of circumstances around the podcast. And uh, you guys have really delivered some great uh, interview pieces and audio and carried us at times so uh my thanks to you all and uh, my thanks to our listeners and readers as well yeah, so with that buddy yeah, yeah. thank you everyone and uh, to 100 more here we go to the montage we should be looking further you know what's going to happen to the next virus uh, what happens if the next virus doesn't travel through air or travels through water um, what happens, you know, so we, we cannot be just static analyzing a given problem in a, in a given moment. We have to look at this at, with a much wider and long term vision. To us, culture is, is a large part of enjoying every single day um, as you go along the journey. It's um, in, in, in our mind, it is, you know, passion, innovation, caring, they're our core values. It's bringing on people that um, are like-minded, are excited about where we believe we can take the industry and our, our impact on the industry. Um, we use that for hiring. We use that throughout our day-to-day um, operations as a business. We have several rituals that we do. Um, the way that we interact with our employees. So for us, it it almost becomes our operating system. Technology moves so quickly and construction tech has been such an interesting place to be in because um, I think it's really evolved in terms of the way partnerships work in the industry. So initially everyone was really, you know, working very individually in silos at separate companies. Mm-hmm. And I think we've all realized that, you know, we can bring the industry along so much faster if we are forming partnerships. And so, you know, we're a partner with Procore. We have partnerships with some of the other companies in the space as well. And ultimately it's better if we can all, you know, focus on certain areas and be the absolute best and really deliver on a great customer experience for, you know, the specific products we currently offer. And it's okay for other companies to do some things that you don't do, um, mm-hmm. just to try and eliminate the overlap. Um, so yeah, we've had, you know, an excellent experience working with some different partners. And I think it will ultimately allow the construction industry to innovate and move that much faster um, and you know go through this digital transformation process that much faster if we're all working together. The leadership was a was a big question on my mind while I did this trip. It's actually a question I asked everybody that I visited pretty much on their thoughts of leadership because you get to see leadership in, in a lot of different ways. It's easy to think leadership is just you know the top person who's in charge, but we believe everybody's a leader and we focus a lot on our organizations. So what I was able to do was have numerous conversations and get a lot of other people's perspectives at it and seeing how everybody's role was to lead through this, especially um, during you know COVID. Everybody had to step up their game and help each other and lead through different circumstances. 
podcast is one of the shining examples of our future, which mm-hmm. is now.